Once upon a time, a young prince came to Mahatma Buddha to learn from him and become his disciple. The next day, Mahatma Buddha sent the prince to a monk's house to take alms. On the way, he thought that he will not get to eat the food that he liked. He will have to live with whatever he gets. But when he went to the monk's house, he saw that the food was served to him that he liked the most. He was very surprised. But then he thought, it must be a coincidence. Whatever I like, it must be made at home today. He eats. Then he remembered that every day after eating, he used to rest for two hours in the palace. But today I have to return in the sun. But then the monk said, Monk, it would be a great blessing if you rest for two hours after eating. The prince was very surprised that when he was thinking about rest, how did Shravaka tell him to rest? Then he avoided this by thinking that it must be a coincidence. The moment I thought of rest, at the same time, he must have thought of it. That the monk has come from a long distance in the sun. It would be good if he could rest a little after eating. The monk laid the mat and he lay down in it. As soon as he lay down, he thought that after leaving the palace, now no one has a hand on their head, nor their roof, nor their bed. Now the sky is the roof and the ground is the bed. The prince was thinking that Shravika, who was going back with the mat, stopped and said, Why do you think so? There is no shade greater than the Mahatma Buddha, no bed greater than the ground, no roof greater than the sky. Please don't think about it. The prince sat up all of a sudden. Now it was impossible for him to believe this as a coincidence. He said to the monk, I am very surprised. Do my thoughts reach you? Do you read my mind? Shravika said, Yes. The prince asked very surprisingly, But how? Shravika said, I had started examining my thoughts. I had started paying attention to the thoughts that came to my mind. Now the situation has turned upside down. My thoughts have disappeared. The whole mind has become thoughtless. Now I have no thoughts of my own. But now the thoughts of those around me also come under my control. I read his thoughts too. The scorpion suddenly got scared and stood up. He said, allow me to go. His hands and feet were trembling. Shravika said, why are you so scared? What's so scary about this? But the scorpion didn't stop. He returned. He said to Buddha, forgive me. I won't be able to go to that door to ask for alms again. Buddha said, why? Did you make a mistake there? Did you make a mistake? The scorpion said, I didn't make a mistake, I got the most respected food and respect. But that young Shravika reads the thoughts of others. This is a very dangerous thing. Because seeing that beautiful young Shravika, I had a desire for work. I had a desire for work. I had some wrong thoughts for her. She must have read all that. Now how can I go there? How can I stand in front of her? How can I look into her eyes? I won't be able to go to her again, Buddha. Forgive me. Buddha said, you will have to go there. If you had to ask for such an apology, then there was no need to become a scorpion. I had sent you there on purpose. And until I don't refuse, you will have to go there every day. Months, two months, years, two years, continuously. Now this is your meditation. But go consciously. Go awake from inside. And go while seeing what thoughts are arising in you. What desires arise. And don't do anything. Don't fight those thoughts and bad desires. Don't try to suppress them. Let whatever thoughts are coming in the mind. Your job is to examine those thoughts. Look at them carefully. So you go awake. Go while seeing what happens inside. What doesn't happen? That scorpion went there the next day. Think once that you are going there instead of it. And that scorpion reads your mind. It is very beautiful. It is very attractive. It is very attractive. But it reads the mind. Yes. If it couldn't read the mind or you didn't know that it reads the thoughts of the mind, then you can think anything in your mind. But what will you do today if you are going today to take alms instead of that scorpion? That scorpion is walking on the road. It is in great danger. It is looking at its mind. It is awake. Today for the first time in its life, it is walking awake. As soon as that scorpion's house started coming closer, its consciousness started increasing. As if a lamp was burning inside. And things started appearing clear. 
and thoughts started appearing while moving. As soon as it stepped on the stairs of the house, a silent shadow went inside it. Consciousness was completely frozen. It is realizing when it lifts its leg. It is realizing when a breath is coming and going. If there was any lack of thought or a wave of lust in the mind, it is also realizing that. As soon as it went inside the house of the scorpion, it became even more peaceful. It is completely awake. As if a lamp was burning inside a house and every single thing was appearing clear. It sat down to eat. It ate. It got up. It came back. It came back dancing that day. It came back and fell at Buddha's feet. And it said, Buddha, today something amazing happened. As soon as I reached near it, I became awake. I found that thoughts disappeared. Desires and lusts were finished. And when I went inside its house, there was complete silence inside me. There was no thought. There was no lust. There was nothing. The mind was completely peaceful and like a pure mirror. Buddha said, this is why I sent you there. There is no need to go there from tomorrow. Now live your life as if all your thoughts are falling. Now live your life as if whoever is in front of you knows you. He is looking inside you. He is reading your thoughts. Live your life as if this and stay awake inside. As the awareness increases, the thoughts and lusts will end. The day the awareness is complete, you will not have any thought of darkness in your life. That day a self-revolution happens. I call this awakening of this state, this awakening of consciousness, the awakening of wisdom. Friends, from this story we have learned that if we keep one thing in our mind that whatever we think about the other person, he is reading it. He is also knowing it. Then our mind will stop thinking bad about anyone. Think, if you know that if you are thinking wrong about a girl and that girl will know this, then will your mind think such things? No. Friends, if we keep doing this process for many days, then we will find that our mind has become thoughtless. He is only living in the present. He is seeing the things of the present. He is a witness of that. Our mind will stop making good or bad opinions about anything. He will only see that thing. He will see it as it is. Friends, if we can do this, then we will be able to live a peaceful and conscious life.